you, what do you think about this proposal? Okay, thank you very much, Linda. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Larry and Congressman. Um, I would like to break my rule now and give a good round of applause for all of our speakers. So, okay, so thank you very much. We've been, we've been breaking the rules, but only a little bit, so that's okay. All right, the next little bit here, uh, the, the give the town uh, council members just an opportunity for kind of a, a quick comment. You've been listening patiently, you've been learning a lot. Give yourself, uh, each of you a chance to weigh in. If you choose, if you don't, it's okay. And then we'll start uh, organizing, we'll get the process for people to speak. And if you've, uh, are any cards out there? I think people have finally found the cards. Okay, there's some cards. Uh, Lee, maybe you can uh, help Denise because she's madly sorting. Maybe you could go pick up some cards. Okay, uh, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Okay, first of all, I do want to thank all of you for coming out. I mean, this is fantastic. Uh, such a great group of concerned citizens uh, coming out on, on a topic like this. And secondly, uh, the civility of you people here, it's fantastic. I've been to some places like Santa Rosa and it's it's chaotic. I, I really appreciate you people of Windsor and the way you act and respect people. Uh, I mean, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, you heard from Congressman Hoffman. You heard from Supervisor Gore. Uh, the council here, you know, we uh, were told of the memorandum of agreement and then the legislation was put in place. And you heard that it's basically no tribe has ever been uh, denied ever being put into trust. So what do you do as a council? If that happens, well, you've got to look and say, hey, maybe we should work with them. And they're willing to work with us. And that's what the council's been trying to do, is work with them. Because we want to do the best for you and give you the best opportunities out there and mitigate anything that could come down the line. And that's what we have been doing. So that's just a quick synopsis and I'll let the uh, rest of the council people speak, if they wish. Um, I'm Deborah Fudge, and I don't know why I always go first, because it's not really the smartest move, but here I am again. Um, I want to thank Congressman Huffman for calling us all together tonight. And as the mayor just said, you know, the county had completed their agreement you know, Congressman Huffman's bill was introduced and the town is planning public hearings, but we weren't ready yet. And so we kind of got caught in this middle ground of what do we do? And you know, we were planning hearings this summer and they probably would have been held this month anyway, but everything else sort of took hold and so our plans got delayed. Um, but the timing is the timing, you're all here. Um, I wanna thank Congressman Huffman for pushing the issue and getting us all here. I'm really proud of Windsor tonight, as the mayor said. This is the biggest hearing we've ever had. I've been on council 19 years. This is bigger than the Walmart hearings. This is bigger than anything else. And you're all being really respectful and we, and we wanna hear everybody's opinion and you're doing really good about expressing those. And I really wanna thank um, Linda Hopkins. She's not just a farmer. She used to be a newspaper reporter. <laughs> but <laughs> she's got lots of other skills. <laughs> But I really want to thank Linda for her tone tonight and her suggestions. And, and we can't respond to anything, but that's really what building community is all about and, and being respectful and coming up with solutions because we are where we are. Um, I had, you know, I prepared remarks. They don't matter anymore because of what everybody else has said. I do, did want to say that, you know, when the Littons first approached us, I think I met Mr. Stidham nine or ten years ago now, and um, you know we dug our heels in and fought, and we said we don't want housing outside our town. And Sam and I are the two council members that put the urban growth boundary on the ballot for you to vote on, and we wanted to protect that, you know, with everything that we hold dear, and that's what 72% of you voted on. Um, this has my opinion on this issue has evolved with time, and it's evolved with understanding and research, just like. Um, everybody else has been doing research. Um, I've talked to other tribal council. I've talked to other attorneys. We've had our own council. Um, we've watched what's been going on across the nation. I urge all of you, if you haven't yet, go watch the congressional hearing that was held 
um, in DC a month ago. The link is on the town's website now. I think the link you also got through some of the Lytton mail, which I didn't even get at my house. Um, but if you watch that hearing, you're going to hear from other Congress people, not just Congressman Huffman, but you're going to hear from the BIA how many lands have already been taken into trust and sort of the inevitability that, that we on the council have been feeling for about three years now. And so what we've been doing and in our agreement is not final and it's the staff is still negotiating and there will be public hearings and probably a, a few months. Um, but what we've, we've been doing in our, in our hearts is, and everybody else will speak for themselves, I'm speaking for myself, is what we think is in the best interest of the town of Windsor. Uh, if this land were taken into trust and we had not spoken with the tribe, like the, and if you watch the tapes on the congressional hearing, you'll see that the Congress people were actually yelling at the county of Santa Barbara county administrator because her county did not work with the tribe and she was admonished over and over for a half an hour by Congress. And so we were sort of held up as, as good players in trying to, you know, welcome our new neighbors and to try to work with them. Um, but if, we, if this land just went into trust with the BIA alone, we wouldn't have any of this mitigation. There would be no money for schools, no money for fire, no land use restrictions at all. There are some. And that's what, you know, we've been trying to protect. And our main interest from the very beginning was no gaming. Our... our, our talks are not final yet, but we have in writing language that says no gaming in perpetuity. It's roughly a four mile uh, circumference around Windsor. It goes all the way to Healdsburg, all the way to Santa Rosa, east and west, in perpetuity. And that's in our draft language that you were about to see later this summer. So that's where we've really been concentrating in, in trying to protect your interests. And then there's other things that we'll, that we'll be able to talk about in a public hearing. but. Um, that's been, as some people expressed, and I think as Supervisor Gore said, it's in our heart and soul to protect the community as best we can based on the knowledge that we had. And so here we are in the room together, sort of all getting on the same page, with, which I think is extremely valuable. I'll let my other council members speak now, but this, is, this has been our intent, and we will continue to listen to you. And I, again, I appreciate everybody being here and showing us what the spirit of Windsor is really about. Hi, everybody. I'm Dominic Fapoli. I'm your council member. Um, first of all, I'm going to echo, this is so amazing to see so many of, of our people in our town show up and, and to care. Um, the end of most of our council meetings, it's the five of us and like three or four staff members sitting in the audience. Um, so the fact that there's so many people coming out to, to care is, is awesome. Uh, this is hard for me to try to, f to figure out what to say tonight. Um, I literally wrote down comments over the last hour. Um, a lot of people who generally, very, very genuinely care for me warn me tonight to be careful of what I say because it would be disadvantageous towards my political future to upset the wrong people. And, and I'm literally talking about family members who, who love me. And I've thought about that, and, and my honest response to that is it would be far more disadvantageous for me to upset or not fight for the people who, who I should, which, are, which is all of you, my constituents and uh, my fellow Windsor residents. So my personal view on this is I want to see this go to a vote of the people, a vote of the people of Windsor, and if you guys, if we as a town decide to, to vote and approve, approve this, then I will fight alongside the rest of my fellow council members to get the best deal we can. But if you decide to oppose it, I believe in representative government, representative democracy, and my job is to represent what you, what you guys have elected me to do. Thank you and welcome everyone. I'm Mark Milan, the Vice Mayor. Town of Windsor, and I want to thank uh, Congressman Huffman, Supervisor Gore, representatives of the tribe, the citizens for Windsor, and all of you for coming. Um, this has been very informative, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to come out tonight to learn more about this, and also to hear your views. To some, it may seem like we're at a crossroads, where some path is going to be better than another. But to me, I gotta tell you, it feels like we're at a cliff or a precipice where we either build a bridge 
or we fall into some chaotic abyss. Some in our community have already chosen to build a bridge. You heard that the school district has received some funds and they've made a pledge to work with the tribe. The fire district has made a pledge to work with the tribe. You heard all about the county's commitment to work with them and why they're doing that. The tribe has asked Windsor, might we be willing to provide sewage treatment in exchange for an aquatic center? Or something, maybe it is an aquatic center, but to exchange something for those services. So do we welcome and work with our new neighbors or do we fight them? That's really the question. Some have said we need to fight the good fight no matter what, even if we lose. We need to stop HR 2538 from allowing uh, the land to go into trust. And you heard Governor Brown has said, it is the policy of his administration to encourage communication and consultation with the California Indian tribes. Do we allow the people of the town of Windsor to vote on whether they want to accept an aquatic center or something for providing sewage treatment service to the tribe? Or do we turn our, turn our nose to such an offer? Do we welcome and work with our new neighbors to honor our land use values, like the county got them to honor theirs? Or do we, or do we fight them? Do we build a bridge or do we step off a cliff to see what happens? Don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll read. <laughs> Uh, thank you for being here. It's a wonderful community. One nation, indivisible, liberty for justice for all. We didn't say the pledge, we usually do. Tonight, I'm hopeful many of us are here to listen, to speak, to give thought, and learn about the Lytton tribe's plan to develop the homelands west and adjacent to our town of Windsor. Many of you have asked the town council to take action against or for the Huffman bill. My thought and response has been the matter of Windsor cooperating with the Lytton Tribe Homeland Trust would be decided by registered voters in the town by an initiative whereby we would extend service to the tribe, sewer and water, in return for a swimming pool. I take that as a mandate. If that's the wishes, that's how I will proceed. That's what I consider true democracy. These notes I'm reading from came at 3.30 in the morning this morning. So I've learned a lot since then by the presentations. I've realized now that the majority of you, I think, in this room, it's not about a swimming pool in return for services. It really is about opposing or supporting the Huffman Bill. In my heart, I stand with the Littons. Just as I stood with the Dry Creek Band on their reservation land, I hope I would have stood with Chief Joseph in the Nez Perce tribe when they left the United States for Canada and came back. I hope I would have spoke out when the nine tribes of, of Northern California were reintroduced to Covalo, the Round Valley, and the atrocities that came of that. I understand that Congress enacted this trust procedure to address certain wrongs against our native people. I know that in 1991, the county and the Littons entered into a legal binding stipulation where the Littons agreed not to establish trust land in the Alexander Valley. In return, the county 
pledged to assist them in finding tribal land. 25 years later, it appears that agreement is coming to a conclusion. I can't really support or oppose the Huffman legislation without knowing where the Windsor voters stand on the issue. I will take, I don't know if we'll get to the vote before the land goes in trust. That's a question I can't answer. I don't know if any of us can, and that's, it's, a, it's a hard question to, to grapple with. But I do know it's beyond Windsor's control whether the land goes in trust. We can oppose or support the legislation, but the legislation may not be the action that's taken to put the land into trust. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, thank you, Council. Okay, um, I'm con uh, normally about this time of the evening you would take a break, but there is too many of us to do that. So what I'm hoping is, and I think it's happening, people are taking their breaks as they need them, so I'm hoping that happens. If we get real late in the evening, I will take a break just, just to make sure everybody gets a chance. But, but please feel free while we're talking to, to keep taking a break as you, as you need to. Okay, what I would like to do is get a show of hands for how many people would like to come up to the three microphone, one of the three microphones and, and talk tonight. I want to get a, give me a pretty good sense because we want to see how much time and two, four... Okay, I'm looking at about 35-ish, and it could go up, could go down. Um, so, uh, and we have many, many cards, and, and Denise uh, is, uh, is being <laughs> kind enough to, to go through them and try to sort them. So what I'd like to do... Okay, um, what I'd like to do is kind of intermingle or balance the comments from the, uh, that you'll come up to the, the, uh, the microphones with some of the questions on the cards so that we try to get all as much as we can, okay? So what I'd suggest is if you're interested in speaking, come on up to either one of these microphones and maybe queue, you know, three, four, you don't need to stand, uh, why don't you stand for a long time, but queue up a couple. And then I'll just kind of, we'll go down, we'll give everybody three minutes, that's the standard council time. If, hang on, hang on, let's keep two, I want to be able to hear everybody. If you guys will watch this wonderful little red-green thing, then, then I don't have to, to sit there and play my little silly music and, and kind of wave at you and stuff. So if you keep to the three minutes, the, the little red thing will, will go on with the three minutes. And I'll just kind of move back and forth, and then as we're doing that, I'm going to try to start taking a few of the questions and kind of intermingle those if that works. So let's start with this gentleman here. Uh, yes, hi, I'm going to turn and so, around yeah, Speak here. right into the microphone. Okay, I'm going to turn around. My name is Peter Walker. I'm a 15-year uh, resident of Sonoma County, and I'm going to be very brief here. I want everyone present to understand what's going on here. Your lifestyle is being robbed from you, okay? This beautiful place that we all love is being invaded by a cancer. It started years ago down in Rohnert Park when Station Casino came in with hundreds of millions of dollars and bought off that group of people down there. None of these people here represent you. None of them. They are selling you out why? Let's begin with this whole thing about these promises. None of these promises are binding. There's no legal binding way these people have to be held accountable for anything they decide to do here, first of all. Second of all, all you have to do is go down to Graydon Casino here and see what's going on. It's a big pillbox. Is that what they promised everybody? No. $800 million came in there. Where did it come from? It came from Las Vegas. Why? 
because Las Vegas understands they can get a foothold because you people are not stopping these people here. You've got to get up and start doing something if you want to save this place. I'm warning you right now, this cancer has come up to this area. It's only going to increase. There is nothing, and I, I, I love American Indians. I'm all for them, understand it. But the problem here is that American Indians have every right, just like you and me, to buy any land as long as we all agree how it's going to be used. They can't just come in here and say they're going to do this thing and end up doing what they did down in Grayton, I mean in, in Roner Park. If you want to see what's going to happen here, just go down the road. It's happening. It's right happening now. That's the blueprint that's going to happen right here if you guys don't get together and start stopping this. I'm going to leave this here now, but this is a warning to all of you. If you don't get together and get your act and get these people out of here, you guys are going to end up with a place that you're going to hate to live in. Why? Because money that's come in out of state, people who don't live here, have a get out of jail card. They can do anything they want to the environment. They can build anything they want. There's no guarantee that they don't do gambling here. It's 22 years. The clock's ticking. Don't be a okay. fool. Get in the street. Stop these people. Put together a grand jury. Do whatever thing you can do. You have Thank constitutional you, rights to stop this. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, but I'm just going to ask you, you guys to get your act together, organize, and stop all these people. Take them out of office and put people in that will do you, something Peter. to represent you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Please, please. Thank you. You're just taking away from the next person's time. Okay, right here in the middle. And uh, if you want to watch the little clock, then I don't have to keep saying that stuff. Good evening. Uh, my name is Peg Champion. I live on Woody Creek Lane in Windsor. I'd like to address my comments to our local legislators and their lawyers who have drafted agreements and bills and made secret backroom deals with little concern for those of us whose lives are most severely impacted. Until tonight, you've only listened to special interest groups rather than soliciting public comment from citizens, stakeholders, and allowing an open debate on critical quality of life issues like our land and water use. Representative Huffman, you position yourself as an environmentalist who focuses on water issues. You propose sweeping legislation to reduce the impact of California's drought with the greatest transparency possible. How is this bill's legislative process increased transparency? How do these massive commercial and residential developments that your bill provides for reduce the impact of California's drought? The Linton development would be an unmitigated environmental disaster. In fact, the full extent of its environmental impact is unknown. That's because the Lytton Development's environmental assessment is critically inadequate for the full scope of this project. Are you aware that the original environmental assessment addressed a 92-acre project, and that testing was done in December 2008, and that other sources of information, such as the Town of Windsor data, are from 2005? Ten years ago, before the current severe California drought ever existed. The final Lytton environmental assessment was based on 124 acres and 147 homes. The developers now want to build 350 houses, which more than doubles the impact to local groundwater and neighboring wells. There has been no environmental impact report prepared for the 511 acres specified in your bill or for the 1,300 acres outlined in the county memorandum of agreement or for the luxury resort and the 200,000 case a year winery. We insist that H.R. 2538 be withdrawn now and that a California environmental quality analysis be conducted before any development project is begun. The current CEQA review is in the best interest of the community. It is in the best interest of the environment, 
for which you have been given the responsibility to protect. Let's put the steps in the right order. A full environmental review first, and then based on those findings, a determination of appropriate land use. Your bill undermines California's own environmental laws. It preempts our community's water rights and takes existing water supply benefits from 99% of our community and hands them to 1% who want to use these benefits for their own financial Thank gain. Okay. We ask you to fulfill your responsibility to your constituents and to the environment. Representative Huffman, you must withdraw H.R. 2538. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jeff, just, would, you, uh, would you like a response, yeah. or is there an opportunity to respond if a direct question is asked? I'd be happy I, to. And, I mean, I was asked a very direct sure, question. A, a, a quick one? A quick one so the, the two questions for me uh, had to do with water and uh, the apparent the perception of a contradiction. Look, I would love for this and all other projects to go through CEQA. So let me just agree with you that would be a far better way to address all of these things but while you and I know that, and we would all prefer that, that's not the choice we have before us. The choice we have before us, if this agreement does not go forward, is a BIA application that proceeds and is likely granted without any additional environmental review. It'll be only on the limited review that has happened to date that I don't think you're satisfied with and I don't think others are. On the water specifically, I think Linda's raised a very important point. If you're concerned about that, and if the choice is between what you get behind door number three with the BIA process or something we may be able to control together, it makes a heck of a lot more sense to do it through the Windsor public water supply than to sink a deep well without any safeguards. Or uh, It's just something to consider. Now, you also asked if I would withdraw my bill. I want to make one point about that. Uh, even if the county of Sonoma asked me to withdraw this bill, that does not mean that this project or this issue goes away. And even if I did it, it does not mean my bill goes away even if my co-sponsor, Congressman Mike Thompson, who also represented this area, withdrew as well. There's another co-sponsor, Jeff Denham. There are other members of Congress who would be happy to pick up this bill and advance it. Deb Fudge told you about the, the reception that this got from the Congress of the United States. So I would urge you to, I, I, I welcome your thoughts. I'm gonna think about any points you raise, but the choice is not between some idealized, perfectly compliant CEQA situation. We're in the world of trust and federal law and choices that many of us wouldn't like to make, but I'm afraid that we're going to have to make. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go right here. And if I could just ask again on the clapping and the going over time, all we're doing when we're doing that is taking away from your neighbor's time to speak. So if you could watch this little, this little clock here, then we don't have to say anything. Hello, I'm Julian Cohen, and I've, uh, I live on Silk Road, Windsor, and I've lived here for 31 years. And when I used to drive to Raley's, which came in here in 1983, I used to drive past Vintana, which was a vineyard, and the high school was a, where the high school is was a vineyard, and um, the downtown buildings around the green were all oak trees. And um, I was always one to welcome people into the community, and I also worked with a lot of the, um, the new developments in the community, and I wouldn't even list them all, but I was on the high school, uh, volunteer high school design committee. Um, I was on a, a, a group workshops that helped um, work on designs in Ventana. And because I feel that this land is gonna go into trust, and, and, and I've worked really hard independently. I've, I've spoken individually with three council members. I've been in groups that I've met with, um, with Congressman Huffman, uh, I've, I've been in groups that have met with um, uh, James Gore, I've, met, I've been in groups that have met with the tribe, I've spoken to people personally, and I put a lot of, 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 of effort into this. I believe the land will go into trust. So it's important for me to think, if the land's gonna go into trust, we need to build relationships with our new neighbors, just like I built relationships 
with most of you because most of you moved into this town long after I was uh, moved into this town. Not all of you, but most of you. And the reason I know that is because population was 6,000 when I moved here. So that's a fair statement. So um, I want to, you know, tribal chairman, I, I would like to be someone from Windsor that says, I believe you are going to be our neighbors. I believe that sincerely because I believe the land is going to go into trust. And I want to build quality relationships with you. And, um, and, I, and I mean that sincerely. And, and, and I hope that we, and, and I want to say some other things. I, I've known the Hopkins family for, gone off again. I've known the Hopkins family for decades and I really respect them. Off recently, recently becoming friends with uh, Richard Mendelssohn, and I really respect the 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 situation they're in. I respect the the uh, pathway that Linda's talking about of some sort of reconciliation, some sort of pathway of of communication. I think that's the only way and the only opportunity we have to go. So thank you so much. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to come back right over here because you've been bouncing that baby for like an hour and a half. Thank you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these cards. We've got a number of cards, and I'm going to take a couple of them and just uh, at the next, after this comment. Okay, thank you. My name is Emmett Hopkins, um, and um, thanks to everyone who... Speak I real, real right thank, into the mic. Thank you to everyone. Sorry about cutting in front of everyone. I'm going to try to get the kids home soon. Um, I have a comment uh, that's directed specifically towards the uh, uh, congressional legislation and Congressman Huffman, and it was touched on during some of the presentations, but I just want to make sure that it's spelled out very clearly for everyone in public record. Um, a group of neighbors, as we discussed, of the proposed development met with the congressman at, at your office in Petaluma several weeks ago, and one thing that you emphasized was that your bill was important because it would prevent the Lytton tribe from creating a casino in Sonoma County and that that was very important to you. Um, during that meeting, it became clear to us and to you and your staffers that there is essentially a loophole that would make it possible for the tribe to create a casino. The no casino clause only applies to the roughly 500 acres that would be put into trust by your bill. It would not apply to any land that the tribe subsequently added into trust, which is essentially a rubber stamping process through the BIA once the tribe has adjacent land in trust. And it is worth noting that since your bill was introduced, the tribe has already purchased several additional properties. While the county's MOA with the tribe does not allow a casino on any county land, that agreement only lasts for 22 years. This allows a substantial gap, um, and I believe the tribe when they say that they do not intend to put a casino and that they do not desire another casino, but I also am not naive and know that things need to be spelled out um, so that we don't have any surprises down the road. Um, at our meeting, you expressed concern over this loophole and stated that you would try to make an amendment to your bill to more completely prevent a future casino. Uh, and, I'm, and I don't need you to respond now, but I would like to know if you have introduced this amendment yet and to please tell us at this point or in the future of your plans. I think yeah, a quick response, I I'll think, I'll be in order. super quick. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I would not characterize it as a loophole. I would not say that there's a rubber stamp that other land could come into trust and be used for gaming, but I'm very interested in just taking the concern off the table. No one should have to worry about that in an agreement like this, and so I am going to explore a way to make crystal clear that what the tribe has told everyone and what is in the scope of the county's agreement, albeit for 22 years, is also manifested in federal law. I, I will make that commitment to develop that kind of, uh, I can't tell you the exact language or the exact ingredients, but we will make that happen. And uh, the nice thing about doing it through legislation is unlike the 22 years in the county MOU, it can be permanent through federal legislation. Okay, um, before I get to Brian, who'll be next, let me ask a couple of questions. We've got many, many of them, and I'm gonna pick a, a couple out that, that maybe haven't been touched on directly. Uh, and these are for, for the tribal representatives, because I understand you, you may have to uh, leave a little bit early. If we have a quick answer, 
either Chairwoman or, or Larry, that would be great if it takes a longer. So the first one is, if a hotel and winery are built, who is financially responsible for impact mitigation, such as road improvements, expansion, for handling addi additional traffic? I think that's relatively answerable. Okay. Well, the tribe, the tribe would be responsible for that. Speak into the microphone if you can. Through the process we have, those off-reservation off mitigation requirements would be the, be the requirement of the tribe to do that. And that would be in okay. negotiation and consultation with the, uh, the, county. with the county. Okay, another one. A 200,000 case winery is very large. What kind of rules and regulations, if any, would have to be followed regarding events, noise, and use of chemicals on the land? Well, once again, I had talked about it in my presentation that that's the right to pursue that. Nobody's saying that's how large this is going to be. We haven't even started the process in looking at what type of uh, winery and resort we would be looking at. So in terms of the rules and regulations, once again, we anticipate negotiating and discussing that with the county to make sure that we do, do something that's totally out of character for that property. Okay. Let me uh, get back to Brian and we'll, I, I'll, I'll, keep, one thing. I'll keep interspersing questions as we, as we go. This is working. I'd just like to add one thing from, from a county perspective and in future negotiations with the tribe, one of the